Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Random Questions. I am here with none other than the star of WPT's Raw Deal, Tony Dunst, known online as Bond18, or can you be known online anymore? I don't so know if that really applies anymore. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a tough one. I have that. to settle for like known in real life sometimes. As Bond18. Apparently. I don't, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't want to associate that with my, my real life. I'll stick to Tony in real life, but you know, when you're on the internet, you can have your screen name and that's fun. Good enough. Tony yeah. in real life it yeah. is. Then. So <laughs> we'll uh, open with what is your earliest memory? My earliest memory your ever earliest in the history ever. of anything? Yeah. I have no idea. Random, Probably just, deranged, or small as it might be. No, I just would have no clue what my original, in terms of chronological order of memories, first absolute so memory it, is. It, I have no the, idea. The youngest thing you remember doing? Um, I remember when we visited Florida when I was like five or six, and my dad, uh, I think it was, it was maybe I was like five and I was really small, and he like held me over the, the shark tank like he might drop me. <laughs> um, he had a sense of humor. And uh, I don't know. That's that's probably about as good as I got for you, somewhere around that five years old childhood area. Childhood terror. That yeah. Tends to, uh, that tends I mean, it made an impression, so. No, that works out. Yeah. What is on your iPod? What is on my iPod? My iPod is not my iPod. It's an iPod that somebody left at a party I threw once, and uh, he had, like, stolen a pair of linen pants from me, and so I said I would happily arrange some kind of meetup where I give the iPod for the pants, and it just never really came to fruition, so uh, I have someone else's iPod, so I can't answer that question. Is it half a suit now, or, you know? No, thank God it was a torn pair of linen pants. This dude is way too drunk and needed pants for some reason, and I accommodated, and he left his iPod there, and I was willing to give it back for him, and I was like, come on, yo, I need my pants back, too. Um, and it just never came together, so I don't have anything on my iPod, but I have stuff on his iPod. That's pretty good. Yeah. If you had one superpower, what would it be? If I had one superpower, what would it be? I wouldn't want a superpower. It's just too much responsibility. How could you not end up going way too far with it? Like, what? I mean, and, you know, what superpower isn't, like, encompassing of all the other superpowers? I have no idea. It w Sorry, man. I just so don't. I don't want. I want to stay normal. You're it because you want to be human. Right? I just want to be normal. Yeah. I That's don't. Right. I don't want to be superhuman. So the question here is, if you're familiar with Australia and the UK, they have a show called Room 101, where people nominate things to lock away forever from their past or whatever. They never want to see it again. Interesting. It's coming around. What would you lock in your Room 101? Nothing, because I don't think I have anything ever to be ashamed about, and don't give a shit. Like, there's just nothing I would ever want to place away and say that is never for public knowledge again because I'm so ashamed or embarrassed by it that it should just never be seen. I like to think that in my life, I don't have anything like that. This is a good way to go. Mm -hmm. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Um, how old are we talking about? Well, I had you know, different ideas depending on age. Start with the first one and then go to the second one. Um, I remember there was a period where I wanted to be a stockbroker. Um, I remember there was a period where I wanted to like perhaps be a fireman and then as soon as I found poker I said I want to be a professional poker player that's what I want to do for a living it's perfect I'm a professional gambler slash poker player and I don't want people telling me what to do okay. so how old are were you and where were you when you first discovered poker um, my dad taught me poker when I was like six but it was just five card draw playing for you know matchsticks or pennies or something like that I started playing Hold'em regularly around 17, 18-ish, like right around the time I turned 18 in my senior year of high school, and uh, just played with home games with friends, quickly got online and went from there. Not bad. Um, if you weren't a poker player, what would you be doing? I guess if I weren't a poker player these days, I would probably be doing some kind of presenting or writing or a combination thereof because I actually have a foot in that industry now. Right. Um, otherwise, I think I would be very content to be a very serious writer, although that's a difficult thing to make a living at, but I enjoy it and I have fun with it, so that's what I would try. If your acting next step was doing an infomercial for the magic bullet, would you do it? Excuse me? The little magic bullet chopping Cuisinart thing. If it was doing an infomercial, would you do that as a next step in an acting career, if you didn't have poker? Would I do an infomercial? Yeah. How much, I mean, like, how busto am I in this scenario? How uh, much are they paying? You're, you're like, an actor, and this is how you're going to make a living. I don't know. Like, I haven't put myself in an actor's shoes. All this media shit that happened, I was just like, okay, I guess we can do this now. It was never some plan of mine. I was just like, I'm supposed to play poker. So I have no idea what my standards and integrity would be like as an actor to the degree that I would not, you know, lower myself to an infomercial or whatever it is I should and should not do in my career. Well, fair enough. What's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to you? Um, 
preps. You know, there's a compliment that sticks out in my mind, which was that when I did my second audition for the Raw Deal on the WPT, um, our president, Adam Plisko, later told me that he had spent a decade in uh, entertainment and media and that it was among the two best tryouts or auditions or interviews he had ever seen in a 10 of 10. Very nice. Now, what's the worst thing anybody's ever said to you? Hmm. I don't know. Um, no other, no particular insult ever singed me so fiercely that I just could not ever forget it. Um, I'm just the kind of guy where those things roll off my back, and I usually like to think I don't give people cause to insult me and rile them up to that degree. So that works. That works. All right, and uh, this one coming off the list uh, mm -hmm. from outside of the emails, Tom Dewan, genius or moron? Tom Dewan seems like a genius. He not only has smashed high-stakes poker, but he's made himself an identifiable brand within poker and probably gets paid to show up to a lot of places, plus got a huge full tilt deal, and uh, is just like a pretty popular, well-liked guy within the industry. Fair enough. Tell us a joke. Uh, okay. Um... How do you make a two-pound lump of fat attractive? I don't know. Put a nipple on it. Bah. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> your dream poker tailor. Uh, you, uh, your tailor. Uh, your dream poker table. You may have a dream poker tailor. I might. Strangely enough, uh, your dream poker table. You and five players, either alive or dead. Uh, the worst five poker players that have ever played the history of the game for the highest stakes <laughs> we are capable of playing. Fair enough. Uh, how would you spend your last twenty-four hours on Earth? Man, my last 24 hours on Earth? Mm -hmm. uh, probably some combination of eating, drinking, uh, drug use, uh, chasing sex, and writing. Well done. Yeah. Documenting the whole thing. The whole thing. Hours. This is my last day and last thoughts. Everything I did on my last day, this is how I spent it. Um, and here's everything that I wanted to tell people. Uh, but never did. I don't know. Usually I would probably just tell them, so I'm not sure what it would be. It would be a very short suicide or death note or whatever the scenario is yeah. that I am dying. It would be but awesome apparently I have 24 hours to know and live hours. it up. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to like drop dead out of nowhere. Like, the world ends tomorrow. Tomorrow. Or your world ends tomorrow. You but it's just me who tomorrow. knows, because everybody else is functioning normal in this little scenario. We would hope so. No, but, you know, let's say, well, you've got a fatal disease, and in 24 hours your body's just going to shut down, like, bang. You know? Okay. I think that would be the only way this That's this works. how this, this hypothetical scenario. exists. Yeah, you've been hit by the uh, massive secret super agent uh, dart of death, and in 24 hours you're... Fucking darts. Fucking darts. Ninjas. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Uh, what's the most expensive thing you ever spent your winnings on? The most expensive thing I ever spent my winnings on was probably like a plane ticket that cost me eight or 9,000 US dollars and encompassed uh, five months worth of travel as it was in around oh, the World oh, Fair. It was in around the World Fair, yeah, though. So, oh, and uh, that was money well spent, man. So, what yeah. was the favorite place you landed on that around the World Fair? <sighs> favorite place that I went to on that particular trip, the most interesting and unique one was maybe Dubai. But that time around, I actually had the best time in Vegas, but it was all pretty good. Oh, you know what? I went to New York for the first time on that trip. New York wins. Really? It's amazing. New York's right. just, oh, man, no wonder those people never want to leave that island. It's your kind of town. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's the worst job you've ever had? Worst job I ever had was as a shoe salesman at Finish Line, where the managers were a bunch of dickheads, and they had all these stupid company policies about how you had to profile people in order to make better sales, and you weren't allowed to lean against the columns in the store, and man, just... Fuck all that. It was terrible. I hated that job. Yeah, that's not good. Retail is a... And I had, like, jobs that were worse actual labor. I was, like, a peanut guy at one of the stadiums. Like, I was a dishwasher at some restaurant. I was a sandwich artist at Subway. Subway and yeah. those are... That's, like, what you would describe I as more demeaning jobs than simply sales. But sales was so just heartless and awful and soul-sucking that I, it was just by far the most intolerable. I, I, would, I think you would make an awesome peanut guy. I can just see you out there hucking peanuts in a baseball game or something. Well, I was like 13. I was a scrawny little kid, and people always want you to toss them at them, and you just <laughs> end up hitting them in the face. Yes, it was, it was quite a girly throw. What is your greatest fear? What is my greatest fear? Mm -hmm. um, man. <sighs> Not having the opportunity to accomplish the things that I want. For some reason that I'm, you know, uh, locked in or tied down and unable to accomplish those things that I want to do within my life. Good stuff. 
If you could go back in time, where would you go? If I could go back in time, interesting. Um, hmm. Go back to the 50s. That seemed nice. That's not bad. Yeah. Now, you're in Hollywood now, but if at uh, you know, some point in your life they say, we're going to make a film about your life, okay. uh, who do you uh, cast to star in it as you? And he's got to be like 20-something and can play a uh, believable me. Um, or maybe a little bit older because this is further down in this my life or something. further down the road, you know, the life and times of... Some fast-talking, confident guy like maybe Ryan Reynolds. There we Ryan go. Ryan yeah. would work out pretty well. Yeah. I like Ryan. Uh, Black Friday, end of the world or just the beginning? Uh, Black Friday is simultaneously the end of the world and just the beginning. It is the end of the world that we knew for online poker in the United States, but it also presents the opportunity for a very new and hopefully more open and accessible world. And we don't know what's going to happen, but that's, of course, all of our hopes. Could be the genesis. Who knows? Yeah. And the last one, a very fun one, and you get to use it however you want, cool. is tell us a secret. Tell us a secret? A secret? Okay. Um, interesting. Secret, because I'm so good at keeping secrets. Um, <laughs> what is it? Secret. I was talking about the best PR trick was always tell your dirty secrets first. So I know that's just it. I've kind of cleared. Have you gotten one? You have My gotten skeleton, my closets, and the closet skeletons uh, in my closet are just wide open, running about. So uh, I don't know what secret I could possibly keep that would be this new big revelation to bust out in your interview. I'm so sorry. Um, I got nothing for you. I'm not a secret keeper. You don't you don't steal shampoo from hotels or anything like that. No, I stole no. a couple of things when I was like 18 or 19, and I was a drunken idiot at college parties. I'm sorry, but I've confessed to that one before. Sorry. But I feel I feel bad. I was being a dickhead. But you know, there there's a secret. I once stole a few things. Not bad. So sorry. It's all right. Well, Tony Dunst, that's the 20 questions, and you've wrapped up the turbo round. Thank you very much. No problem, Matt. And we hope to see more of you on the WPT. Thanks. Thank you.